a tower, like a hotel tower. Let's build a hotel, okay? This is first floor, second floor, third floor, fifth floor, so forth, away from the nucleus. Are you with me? So looking at the periodic table, you know, I told you that there's so many things hidden in that periodic table. So get one out in front of you, and I'm going to get one up here on the board as well. All right. Well, maybe I'm going to get one on the board. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Periodic table coming at you. So there's a good old-fashioned periodic table. So the floors that I'm talking about, first floor, second floor, third floor, there are these numbers. Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5. That is what is referred to as the principal quantum number. Principal quantum number means how many floors are you, if you will, away from the nucleus. All right. Is everybody cool with that? Okay. Now, electrons, and I really do not like these thumbtacks here because I can just see me getting carried away and jamming myself. Right. Could you see that happening? And you would laugh at me, wouldn't you? All right, here we go. So get rid of that. All right, I got to get rid of all dangerous objects or I can't lecture. All right, so that's that. Now, electrons can be in rooms, right? So we're talking about a hotel here. If you go to a hotel, you can have a variety of rooms to choose from, right? You can have a, a room with just a single bed gutted, right? You're just a truck driver. You want a place to sleep, all right? You can have a double bed, a king-size bed, a suite, a honeymoon suite, bubbles and all this, okay? So you've got different things to choose from. Electrons do as well. The first room that an electron can choose from is something that looks like this. It's a sphere. And they're going to call that an S orbital. Okay. Now, I'm using the word orbital and room interchangeably. Is you have an orbital here. Okay. Now, here's the rules. There can be no electrons in an orbital. That's okay. I mean, there can be an orbital there without an electrons in it. There can be one electron in a room or an orbital, or there can be two. But there can never be three. So are we cool with the first rule? In any room that I'm about to describe to you, there can never be three electrons, no matter what you do to the atom. So an S orbital then can contain how many electrons maximally? Two. Two. This is the maximum it can contain. And electrons are old-fashioned. Right? I'm certainly not trying to be crazy here, but the electrons are old-fashioned. There's always a spin up and a spin down. Never in a ground state atom will you have two spin ups, or never will you have two spin downs. And everything that we're talking about here is ground state. Now, what does that mean? That means how it's just naturally sitting there. It's not been excited by electricity, like lightning. It hasn't been excited by lasers. It hasn't been excited by extreme heat uh, and pressures and all that. Okay, so that's one type of orbital. Has anybody got any questions? So I guess if you were an electron and you wanted to pay for a room, this would be the simplest room you could pay for. Something that looks like an S. You could walk in here, and of course you could imagine that this room would make no bearing as far as a human being goes, right? I mean, why would you need this room in the house? Where could you put a, a table and chairs or anything, right? You couldn't, I guess, except having a novelty of a room that looks like that. All right, yeah? Uh, those rules only apply to the S orbitals? No, all orbitals. Any orbital cannot have any more than two electrons in it, period. Okay. Now, what's the next orbital? Does anybody know? Has anyone ever had this? You have. Okay, they're what now? P's. Wonderful. Now, this is the first type of P orbital. It kind of looks like an infinity sign or, if you will, an unshelled peanut, right? Like the one you got to crack, not the one that's already been cracked. It looks like this. Now, this is a p orbital. Now, how many electrons can be in a p orbital? Two, right? Two maximally. These are all maximum. I want to stress there can be one, there can be none, but there can be two maximum. Well, just Jim Dandy. All right, Bridget, are you able to see this with the lights out? Okay. Okay. 
All right, so that's your p orbitals. Now, if we go back and review a little bit of college algebra here in the Cartesian coordinate system, this is an x, look at this. All right. This right here is an x-axis. This is a y-axis. And then what's the other axis? Z. Okay, there is an axis through there. There are three different p orbitals. There is an x orbital, there is a y orbital, and there is a z orbital. Now what's the difference in the orbitals? The difference is, is their orientation. So how many can be in a piece of y? Two. Two. How many can be in a piece of z? Now that's a grand total of how many electrons in all three p orbitals combined. Six total electrons in p orbitals. Take a look at that. That word is plural. Six total electrons in p orbitals. So if someone says, how many electrons is in the p orbital? What do you say? Two. Two. If someone says to you, how many electrons are in the p orbitals, you would say six. I ran into some problems with this because, you know, sometimes biologists, you know, they got like an introductory thing of chemistry, and they really don't know that much about chemistry, so they'll just tell you, well, in each p orbital, there's six electrons. Oh, no. There are six electrons in all three p orbitals, and these are what are called degenerate. Does anybody know what the term degenerate means? It means that they have the same energy level. All right? So a piece of X, a piece of Y, and a piece of Z is not higher in energy than any of the others. Okay? In other words, they are on the same floor coming out of the nucleus. The only thing that you change with energy is like floor 1, floor 2, floor 3, and so forth, right? Does that make sense to you? Okay. So there is one orbital that is of the S. Yes? Okay. How many P orbitals are there? Three. Three. Now the next is D orbitals. How many of those do you think they are? Four. One, three. Five. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. These right here are what they call the D orbitals. Okay? There are five of them. Now, they are more complicated to, to draw, which you are not responsible for. There's a dz squared, a dx squared minus y squared. I mean, there's all kinds of crap like this. But you don't have to draw them. All right, at this level, I don't think that's important. Now, in each one of these d orbitals, how many total electrons can you have? Two. Two. Wow, you guys are picking up on this, right? So that means we are setting with how many total electrons here? Ten, Ten total electrons. Wow. Okay. So we've got one s orbital, three p orbitals. We've got five d orbitals. How many f orbitals do you think we got? <coughs> What's that now? Seven. No, it's really six. No, I'm just playing. It's funny how it goes like that. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's that now? Stop that, right? Okay. So how many electrons does that mean that you naturally have? 14 total electrons. All right, is there anybody that's upset about this? What's that now? The blue? 